प्रेमानंदे हरि 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 हरि
Brindai Tulsi Debai Priyai Keshavasya Cha Krishna Bhakti Prade Devi Satya Vachai Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda <coughs> Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare First of all I'm offering my unlimited dandavat pranams <clears throat> my Shraddha Pushpanjali at the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved Gurudev, Nitya Lila Pradishtam Vishnupad Paramahansa, Ashto Tarasata Sri Shiva, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada. Then I'm offering my same unlimited Dandavat Pranams <clears throat> and my Shraddha Pushpanjali at the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved Siksha Guru Devs, Nitya Lila Pradishta, Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Sto Tarasata, Sri Shila Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Goswami Maharaj, <coughs> and Nitya Lila Pradishta, Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Sto Tarasata Sri Shila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. And my Dandavat Pranams to all of my Sri Sri Rupanuga Guru Varga. My Dandavat Pranams to all the Vaishnavas and Vaishnavas. Jai Sri Sri Radha Damodar Jiu Ki Jai Sri Damodar Ashtakam Ki Jai Sri Prajamandala Parikrama Ki Jai Jai Shri Kartika Vrata Ki Jai Damodar Vrata Ki Jai Urja Vrata Ki Jai Niyama Seva Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishna Vrinda Ki Jai Samagata Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Nitai Gaur Pranamandi Hari Hari So today is which day of Kartik? Fourth? Fourth day? Yeah. 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 It's day four. Okay. All right. Did we read anything last night? No. No. Okay. So, in the last class, there was a very technical description of <clears throat> Goloka and Gokula. Mm -hmm. And there was also a discussion about, and Bhaktivinoda Thakur gave a very nice comment on this as well, also Jiva Goswami and other Acharyas as to the nature of the pastimes, the leelas which Krishna performs in Bhom Leela. Bhom Leela means on the earthly plane. Mm -hmm. There's also a very astonishing thing that Gokul, which is here, right? Gokul is the birthplace of Lord Krishna in his own Lila. 
But it's also, we were reading that it's been described that actually Goloka is the transcendental opulence of Gokul. It's not the opposite. Anyway, I'm not going to get into that topic. It will take more time. But what we discussed the other class was that the parakya bhav, this mood of parakya ras, unwedded uh, love of the gopis that is manifested here. There are some persons who do not accept that this is being manifested in the nityadham. In fact, a lot of them believe that Radha and Krishna are married and so forth, and there is no unlawful, unwedded love, parakiyaras. So this has not been accepted one single iota, this kind of argument by our Rupanuga Acharyas and by Sri Rupa Goswami himself. They have declared that that is the nitya going on there. That Radha and Krishna are what we are hearing from their pastimes uh, and their Ashtakali Lila and the books of Srila Vishana Chakravarti Thakur, Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, all are telling that the Parakya Bhav, the mood of the Braja Gopis in Braj, Parakya Ras, this is eternally going on in the Nityadam. And there is also so much meeting and separation, and this is going on repeatedly, meeting and separation. Vipralamba and Sambhog. So just to refresh our memory, I'm going to read what Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur has explained. Mm. There is a verse that was cited from the Brahma Samhita, it's the second verse from the Brahma Samhita after the first verse. Ishwara Parama Krishna Satyana Vrindavan. So the second verse is Sahasra Patra Kamalam is describing the shape of Goloka Vrindavan, Krishna's eternal planet. Uh, this is not an exact translation, it's just an explanation by Bhakti Vinod Thakur from a certain angle. But Sahasra Patra Kamalam means the thousand petaled lotus. Sahasra, thousand Patra Kamalam, the petals of the lotus. Gokulakyam, Mahatpadam. Gokulakyam means it is known, it is called uh, the supreme abode, Mahatpadam, Gokul. Gokul Akya Mahatpadam. Tat Karnikara Tat Dhamma. Tadanam Tamsha Sambhavam. He's talking about the Karnikara, the whorl of the lotus. Tat Anantamsha Sambhavam. So, Bhakti Vinod Thakur has explained the meaning of this verse as follows Maha Vaikunta or Paravyom Dham, is eternally situated beyond the Viraja River. Do you remember us reading that? So this holy abode mm, is the embodiment of the three divine opulences. What are those? Vaikuntha, there are these three divine opulences, and this abode uh, is the embodiment of these three divine opulences. What are they? Imperishability. Imperishable. Nothing ever changing or going into the past. Nothing ever diminishing. So that is the first opulence. The second one is there is no sorrow there. No sorrow whatsoever. It's only produced here in the material world. Of course, in the spiritual world, there are transcendental emotions. 
they're the original form of all emotions. And you can say there is sorrow. Right? Because are the gopis happy when they cannot unite Radha and Krishna? No. They're, it's a kind of sorrow. But it's filled with ecstasy because it's a transformation of praying. At any rate, this place, uh, that Mahavaikuntha, Parvyom Dham, knows by these two names. So there is there is imperishability, freedom from all sorrow, and also freedom from all types of fear. All fear there. Now, the extremely sweet Gokula, otherwise known as Goloka, which is full of unlimited transcendental opulence. It is situated beyond that part of Yom Tam. So you'll have to go very, very far distance. You want to get there. Uh, is there any kind of spaceship that can bring us there? Hmm? What? Maybe, but it'll have to be transcendental. <laughs> Yes, there cannot be any kind of mundane spaceship. They cannot even go a tiny little little hair's length in comparison to this universe. So what to speak of? What to speak of beyond this universe and then go into the unlimited Paravyom, spiritual sky and the Vaikuntha uh, and then going to the highest position in the spiritual world. Highest. At a very far distance. But Yoga Maya can arrange very easily. There is no limitation of time and space in the spiritual world. Just like if the jivas who have done the necessary Bhajan and have attained the higher stages of praying when it is time, not praying in the stages of bhav, before praying. We were telling the other day that they are transferred to the universe where Krishna's pastimes are currently going on. Do you know that Krishna's pastimes are right now going on in a material universe? Not this one. But it is always going on. Just like the sun, that's the comparison, is that the sun is always shining somewhere. When it stops shining here, it's shining in another place. So Krishna's leelas are eternal in the material universes as well. Never stopping. When the so-called annihilation takes place, they're still going on. Uh, in the transcendental world. But Krishna's pastimes are inconceivable. His dham is also achintya, inconceivable. But uh, we would think that very difficult to transfer a jiva from this universe, take him out of his body, and transport him to where? Another universe. But do you know that Yoga Maya can do that? Instantly. How can we understand that? Not with our tiny brains, we can't understand. So, the extremely sweet Gokula, otherwise known as Goloka, which is full of unlimited transcendental opulence, is situated beyond that part of Yom Sometimes Goloka is also called Gokula. But Goloka is actually the opulence or the manifestation of Gokula, which is the abode of all sweet pastimes. This holy abode, radiant as Goloka or Gokul, it appears in the form of Gokul below Vaikuntha on the earth planet. So, 
In the Srimad uh, Brihad Bhagavatamrita, Sanatana Goswami has right, written, Yata Kridati Tambumo Goloke Pita Taivasa Vata Urdu Vatayo Bedo Anayo Kalpieta Kevalam. This is the statement of Sanatana Goswami in his Brihad Bhagavatamrita. Quote, Krishna's pastimes in Gokula, which is situated on the material plane, are the same as those in Goloka. The only difference between Goko Goloka and Gokula is that Goloka is situated in the highest region and Gokula manifests on the earth planet. And Jiva Goswami in his Krishna Sandarbha he has also accepted Goloka as the manifestation of Vrindavan. There's a footnote, but I won't read the footnote now because you have to go to the end of the chapter to read it. Now, the next section, we were reading this. So this is to carefully understand. Vraja, the eternal abode. The eternal abode of Parakya Bhav the mood of unwedded, amorous love. In Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami is stated in the fourth chapter, 47th verse. He says, Parakya bhave ati rasera ullas vraja vina ihar anyatra nahi vas <clears throat> So for this verse, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is commenting in his commentary on Rita Pravaha Vashya. He's saying, many people think that Sri Krishna is performing his pastimes eternally in Goloka and he appears in Braja for a short time just to perform his pastimes in Parakya Bhav, the mood of unwedded amorous love. So what do they think? They think that Krishna comes to them this to the earth planet only to perform Parakya, parakya Ras for a short time and then go back to Golok. Right. right, because they believe that Parakya Ras is not going on there, right? So this, however, is not the opinion of our Gaudiya Goswamis who accept also the pastimes of Bra in Braj as eternal, meaning these pastimes here. Vraja is the name of the absolute inner chamber of the transcendental and eternal Goloka Dham. That is called Braja. That's why Srila Prabhupada, in order to bring this conception of the eternal spiritual world and Krishna's eternal spiritual planet and the Vaikuntha planets, before Prabhupada came to the West, he had the jacket covers. He had an artist paint uh, a depiction of the material universe and then the Vaikuntha planets and then finally Goloka Vrindavan in the shape of a whorl of, of, of a lotus. And there, in the middle of the whorl, is called Braja. There's also an outer part of Goloka, but the inner part, which we are concerned with, is called Braja, eternally is also called Shveta Dvip. So we have understood from our acharyas that Radha and Krishna's pastimes, most intimate pastimes, and Parakya Ras is going on eternally there in the spiritual world. So, you know, Prabhupada's jacket cover depicted this. And then the BBT artists repainted it in a much more, how do you say, refined manner. You know? So the Goloka Vrindavan, the pastimes going on there, actually in the Horo, the most inner sanctum. There are two parts of that. There are two parts there in the eternal Vitita of Braja. And one part, Radha and Krishna's pastimes, as we have seen them here, and described in 10th canto, they're going on. But what is on the other portion of Raja? Yeah. 
Yes. Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu's pastimes of Radha and Krishna combined in one form. And you see that also in Prabhupada's painting. On one side, there's Mahaprabhu dancing, and on the other side, Radha and Krishna. So, the same pastimes that Sri Krishna performs in Vrindavan on earth, including those of Parakya Ras, they transpire eternally in the supremely situated eternal Raja Dham. So now, Srila Kaviraj Goswami states also in Adi Lila, Chaitanya Charitamrita, chapter 3, verse 10. Ashtavimsha chatur yuge, dvaparer sheshe, vrajera sahita hoy krishnera prakashe. Here, the words, vrajera sahita, it means along with vraja. They, this clarify, clarify that also existing in the transcendental Goloka Dham, is one inconceivably sweet abode named Vraja. Vrajera Sahita means along with Vraja. So this actually, this verse is describing how Krishna appears after so many Chatur Yugas. Uh, he appears uh, at the end of Dvapar Yuga, Dvaparera Sheshe. Vrajera Sahita Hoy Krishna Prakashi means Krishna manifests along with Raja. So Sri Krishna appeared on earth along with this very abode, with the help of his inconceivable potency. Parakya Rasa is permanently present only in this eternal Raja, which lies within the inner chambers of Goloka. Clear? Can you explain the difference between Vraj and Goloka? Vraja and Goloka. Well, that's what we've been discussing I here. I didn't get it. Because uh, I just told that the inner chamber in Goloka Vrindavan is also called Vraja. So, Goloka is referred to as the eternal spiritual planet. And when Krishna descends into this world, that same Vraja from there appears here. And then it is also known as Gokul, when it appears here on the material plane, so-called material plane, but it's not. It's actually directly manifested. Just like Krishna himself is directly manifest. His, uh, his eternal dham is directly manifested. There's none different from him. Is that clear? So, where was it? Sri Krishna appeared on earth along with this very abode, with the help of his inconceivable potency. Parakya Rasa is permanently present only in this eternal braja, which lies within the inner chambers of Goloka. This is because the supreme mellow, Parakya Rasa, is present there with qualities unlimitedly superior to those found anywhere else in Goloka. I mean, <laughs> we can't stretch our brains to that extent, <laughs> that the entire Goloka Vrindavan planet, right, which is described in Brahma Samhita as thousand petaled like a lotus and so forth, there are many outer parts also. And we're told that in some of those, in that section, and sometimes Radha and Krishna are also married. Hmm? It is also going on but not in the inner section. That's why he says that Parakya Ras is permanently present only in this eternal Vraja, which lies within the inner chambers of Goloka. This is because the supreme mellow Parakya Rasa 
is present there with qualities unlimitedly superior to those found anywhere else. Where? In Goloka. Now, even in the Braja manifested on this earth planet, living entities have been able to directly witness the variegated nature of the unmanifested Vraja, spiritual world, in the transcendental realm. Understand? You didn't catch that. What did he say? Even in the Vraja, manifested here on the earthly plane, the living entities have been able. Which living entities? Who are there when it's manifested? When Krishna's pastimes are manifested. The living entities have been able to directly witness the variegated nature of the unmanifest Braja in the transcendental realm. So in other words, what is there unmanifested is called Aprakatalila in the transcendental realm. When Braja manifests on this earthly planet, the living entities can directly witness that variegated nature. So, Besides prakat prakash, which means the manifested appearance, and the aprakata prakash, the unmanifest appearance, besides these two, the only remaining mystery is that on earth there is also another type of manifestation prakash, which is called, remember from the other day, drishyaman. Everyone say, Drishyaman. Drishyaman. Prakash. Prakash. So, this is the vision that ordinary people have of Vrindavan and the other holy abodes when the pastimes are no longer manifest there. Then they cannot see those pastimes. But they have Drishyaman Prakash. So if anybody has ever physically gone there, you know, then you have had Drishyaman Prakash of the Dhamma. And it depends on the person's, you know, advancement in bhakti, how much they <clears throat> feel drawn toward and feel attachment for and experience a very special realization in the Drishyaman Prakash. So we talked about that the other day, how the six Goswamis wandered everywhere. But because they are completely mad in praying, they're not just seeing the Drishyaman Prakash, they're directly witnessing the pastimes. But they also taught about how to enter through what? Separation mode, Vipravamba. And especially Srila Raghunath Das Goswami was the example of this. Uh, through separation mood, he was in that Vilava Kusha Manjali we were talking about the other day as he's describing the internal vision that he's experiencing in various, various services to Srimati Radharani. And then sometimes that vision disappears from him. And he comes into external consciousness, Bahir, um, Bahir, means external, Dasha, Bahir Dasha. And sometimes he's in between external and internal, Antara, Bahir, Dasha. So, Drishyaman Prakash is what anyone will see with their eyes. When we go there, we have faith that this is the divine transcendental abode of Krishna. Why do we have faith in that? Because it's very clear that all of the Acharyas have stated this. Uh, the Srimad Bhagavatam has described in detail the pastimes of Krishna manifesting there. So there can be no mistake. Where is that place? It is that very place. Down through the centuries, 
since more than 5,000 years, that is the very place. And that is why Mahaprabhu appeared there in India and he manifested in his pastimes in Navadvipta, the other side of Braja, from the spiritual world. Navadvip, Navadvip and Vrindavan are non-different. They're exactly the same abode, but as we said from another section of the, of the transcendental world, there is the Shweta Dvip and there is the Raja, those two. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the combined incarnation of Sri Mati Radhika and Krishna together in one form. Uh, he wanted, Krishna wanted to experience and he went to Vrindavan, the Drishyaman Prakash, the exact same places where we can go. Uh, we have a place called Gopinath Bhavan, built by Gurudev, exactly in the place where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sat every day on the banks of the Yamuna. What is that place called? Imlitala. Although it's on the other side of the wall, <laughs> but that place is Imlitala. So all devotees of Krishna, uh, they all long for wanting to go there to that transcendental abode, roll in the dust, go to all the holy places on Parikrama, be in the association of pure Vaishnava. There is nothing else beyond this. They all yearn for this. So, Raja, the land of enchanting beauty and sweetness. Now, the Brahma Samhita 556 describes Vrindavan Dham or Goloka in this way. So, you know the Brahma Samhita, Govinda Mari Purusham Tamaham Vajami. So, there are so many prayers that Lord Brahma offers, and at the last line, Govinda Mari Purusham Tamaham Bajami. Then finally, at the very end, there are two verses. Actually, it's even listed as one verse, 56. But, they have a completely different meter, and they're long. So, these two verses, Lord Brahma is saying, I worship that supreme abode of Shveta Dvip, where the Supreme Personality, Brajendra Nanda, Sri Krishna, is the only lover. I'm chanting the verse, then we'll read this. Shriyak Kanta Kanta Paramapurusha Kalpataravo Dhruva Bhumish Chintamani Ganamai Toyam Amritam Kataganam Natyam Gamanam Apivam Shri Priyasaki Chidanandam Jyoti Paramapitad Aspadam Apicha Sayatra Kshirabdhi Shravati Surabhidyas Chasumahan so Lord Brahma is finally telling at the end, I worship that supreme abode of Shweta Dvip, where the Supreme Personality, Brajendra Nandan, Sri Krishna, is the only lover. Where his Swarupa Bhuta Braja Gopis, the embodiment of all Lakshmis, are the beloveds. Where every tree and creeper is a transcendental desire tree. <clears throat> where the earth is made of spiritual touchstone, and the water is nectar. 
where speech is like melodious song and movements are like dance, where the flute is the dear female companion, where light is full of knowledge and bliss. where each and every supreme transcendental object is all tasty and delectable, where great divine oceans of milk continually flow from the udders of uncountable surabi cows, and where transcendental time is eternal and without past and future, so that even half a moment never slips away. In this material world, only rare saintly personalities behold this abode as Goloka. And only those who are the objects of Gokulapati, Sri Krishna's mercy, only they can understand the nature of this abode. Very wonderful, these two verses. The conclusion of Lord Brahma's prayers. Now, Gurudev is quoting the Rig Veda. It is also describing Brajadam. You see what Gurudev is doing at the beginning of the entire Brajmanda curriculum book? He's bringing us to Braj. He's giving us all the quotations from various shastras that have been cited by the great acharyas to describe what is Braj. So even in the Rig Veda, uh, there is a description of Brajadam. Here it is told. Tavam vastun yushmasi gamadhyay yatra gavo burishringa ayasha Atrahata duru gayasya prishna paramam padama vapati buri. This means Vraja Vrindavan is the Lord's topmost dhamma or sacred abode. And there the Supreme Personality, Sri Krishna, the object of the Vedas sweetly plays his flute and protects the roaming cows who have many good qualities and who have beautiful horns. <laughs> this is a description of Brajadam, Rig Veda. Now, he cites Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter 10, uh, sorry, 10th canto, chapter 21, verse 10. Now, here, the gopis themselves are singing the glories of Vrindavan. <clears throat> this is the Veda Gita chapter. Vrindavanam sakibuvo vitanoti kirtim yad devaki sutapadam bujalabda lakshmi govinda venam anumatta mayura nrityam prekshyadri sadvavavata Bhavaratanya samasta sattvam. O Saki, the fame of the earth is enhanced, having been splendidly decorated with the marks of Sri Krishna's lotus feet. Upon hearing Sri Krishna's flute song, the peacocks take it to be the thunder of the clouds. And becoming intoxicated, they begin to dance. When the other animals in the meadows of Govardhan see this, they also feel pleasure, and they become stunned. Thus, the presence of Sri Vrindavan on the earth makes this planet even more glorious than Vaikuntha. You see? Confirmed by the gopis. More glorious so Gurudev goes on and he says the gopis they also say oh Saki all of the six seasons 
many flowers of the six seasons, such as Bailey, Juhi, Chaveli, Champak, Kadamba, they bloom all over Vrindavan. Their fragrance reaches far and wide, inviting bees to partake of their honey. They come in swarms to drink this honey, and becoming intoxicate, intoxicated, they start humming. This sound seems to come from Vanadevi, the goddess of the forest, who having anticipated the arrival of Madhupati Krishna, now welcomes him. When the birds with sweet and melodious voices like Shuka, Pika, Papiha, when they, these birds hear the humming of the bees, how can they remain silent? They are also immersed in bliss, and they fly from one tree to another, from one branch to the next. Vrindavan resonates with their harmonious singing that echoes all over the hills and across rivers and ponds. What Gurudev is doing is, is his, in his bhav, he himself is relating these various shlokas from the Vedogit. He goes on, Aha! Vrindavan is such an extraordinary and astonishing sacred abode. In this Vrindavan, the sweet splendor of spring, uh, the king of all seasons is ever present, and a green velvety carpet covers the surface of the earth. Lotuses of many colors bloom in the ponds and rivers, and the branches of the trees are well adorned with fully bloomed champa, chameli, bailey, juhi, and other delightfully fragrant flowers, whose nectar is relished by intoxicated bees. The entire atmosphere is pervaded with both transcendental bliss and the intoxication of youth. These combine to create a kingdom of ever-increasing joy that captivates the body and mind. Playing sweetly on his flute, Rajendra Nandan Sri Krishna roams throughout this land of Braja along with his elder brother Balaram and their innumerable cowherd boyfriends and cows. This land of Braja is blessed where the creator of the universe, Lord Brahma, dwells in the form of a mountain range in Varshana to have the dust of the divine couple, Sri Radha Krishna's lotus feet on his head, where the maintainer, Lord Vishnu, has assumed the forms of Govardhan and Vishnu Parvat, where the moon-crested Mahadev, Lord Shiva, has taken up residence as Nandishwara Hill in Nanda Brahm, and where Uddhav, the best of Sri Hari's servants, lives as a blade of grass, a small shrub, and a creeper on the bank of Kusum Sarovara. What a beautiful oh, Gurudev is telling. When you go there on the Parikrama, and if we follow Gurudev's Parikrama book, Jai Shri Shri Guru Gauranga, Gandhar Vita Vidhar Shri Shri, Radha Govinda Ji Uti Jai, Shri Jagannath Pavadev Subhadra Sudar Shantaka Ji Uti Jai, Giridhar Govinda Ji Uti Jai. So Lord, Lord Brahma, he's also in Braj, he took another form. What was that form that Lord Brahma takes? Hmm. Uh, Parvat, the mountain in uh, Varshana. In Varshana. So when you go up the stairs to the top of the hill in Varshana, then they have a, a place where there's a small little deity of Brahmaji. Because Brahma has four heads, and there are four hills there, when you see from a distance. So Brahma has actually become 
that very hill because he wanted that all the pastimes would take place on him, on his heads. Oh, but he's not the only one. Who else became a hill? Vishnu. Vishnu. Lord Vishnu also became a hill. Which hills? There's two. Giriraj Govindan. Vishnu means Krishna. But also Vishnu Parvat. Where is Vishnu Parvat? Huh? Vishnu Parvat is also there in Varshana. When we go through Shankari Kor, that very narrow passageway, then uh, where you can see there's one side is a little bit reddish rocks and the other side is more whitish. And uh, so there is Vishnu Parvat also. So, and also the moon crested Mahadev, Lord Shiva, he has also taken up residence where? As the hill of Nandishwar. Because what does Nanda Ishwar mean? Nandishwar. The Lord of Nandi. Yes, the Lord of Nandi, the bull, the carrier, the Lord Shiva. So he's he's called Nandishwar Hill in Nandanao. And also, Uddhava, he is also manifested in Braj. Uddhava himself. What did he manifest in Braj as? He made a prayer that he wanted to always eternally reside in Braja as what? That's right, bushes, creeper, like that. And why? So he could get the footprints for the gopis. Yes, and especially one of them. Yes. Asha Maho, Charanarena Jusha Mahamshyam. Vrindavan ekem apikurva lato shadmi nam. Lata o shadi means, lata means a creeper, and uh, gulma. Gulma means like a bush and grasses, like that. So he's praying to become that. Why? Charanarena jusham aham shyam. I desire to have even one dust particle. So if I can take birth in that way, then when that supremely uh, glorious Gopi walks by, some dust particle may come on me. This is seriously, this is his prayer. And it, it was fulfilled. That's why just before Radha Kunda, what is there? There's a small Kunda. Krishna Sarovi? No. Uddhava. No. Yeah, Uddhava Kunda, it's called, because Uddhava is there in the form of blades of grass and so forth. And so that we can know that actually there's a pastime. After Krishna had left this world and his great, his grandson, great grandson or grandson, I'm forgetting, uh, Vajra Nava. So he came there to Braj and brought the queens of Krishna. Queens were still living. He brought the queens of Krishna there. And he was showing them all the pastime places around Braj. Also, he established the deities in Braj. He uh, arranged for different kundas to be properly excavated, temples like this. Great grandson of Krishna, great grandson, yes, Vajranava. So when they came there to Uddhava Kunda, uh, then they began Kirtan. And the queens and all, they were so much in separation mood. And so as they were singing in this way, suddenly Uddhava came out, manifested from the blades of grass and so forth. 
and he joined the kirtan. And then Radha and Krishna and the gopis, they also manifested there. And after some time, he disappeared. So that very place, Uddhava is very near to Radha Kunda. On the Purikama path. And you know that when you go from there, you go to Radha Kunda and then you circumambulate Radha Kunda and then you come back on the Purikama Mark, which is coming back the opposite direction because that's the very tip of Govardhan, even though Govardhan is not uh, visible there, you know that. In the Radha Kunda, Govardhan is not visible there. It's only flat. There is no Govardhan there. But now when you come back towards the center, you know, in that direction, now, not far from Radha Kunda is a place called very, very well known. All the devotees go there and take the photos and people from all over the world. What's it called? Kusum Sarovra. And there is the famous pastimes Gurudev describes of the gopis coming to pick the flowers in that area. But Krishna also trying to stop them. But they won't have, they won't be stopped by Krishna. <laughs> so you can see Uddhava Kund just across from Kusuma Sarovra. And you can see Kusuma Sarovra just across from Radha Kunda. And then a little bit ways as you continue to go on the Purikama path, let's say towards the center of Govardhan, a little ways from there, now Giriraj begins to manifest, you know, coming up from the ground, from underground. Why Giriraj is not manifested there at Radha Kunda? Why Govardhan is not manifested to our vision. He's gone completely underground. Does it mean he's not there? No, it's still Govardhan. He's been sinking a little bit. But that's not the reason, because even during Krishna's pastimes, there was no hill there, Govardhan. But he's there. He's underneath. And he's hiding there and observing all these pastimes of Radha and Krishna. Hmm. Yes. Gurudev explains this in his Purikama book. Also, it's explained like the shape of Giriraj Govardhan is what? What is the shape of Giriraj Govardhan? It's likened to two different entities. Peacock and what? Yeah, cow. And so the two eyes of the cow, that's Radha Kun Shavakun. And you know how a cow, when it's lying down, it brings its head, you know, towards its body. So this is the description. And then coming up. But the cow's head is down. So that Radha Kund and Shavakun, and also peacock. That's why when you go to the opposite side, the far other end of Govardhan, and start to come again back on the Prakama. So when you go there, then that place is called Kuchari, which means the tail of the peacock. So, and the peacock, you know, has a long neck and small head in comparison with its body and so forth. So then the two eyes of the peacock, like, compared to Radha Kun the shape of Giriraj. Okay, so, here in Braja, the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna, he becomes the calves. And he relishes the tender and delicious grass. When did he become the calves? Yes. And there he relishes the delicious grass. And here, the young girls of Braja go daily to the wells and the other sources of water, also called panagats, various ghats, 
other gods. They get water. And they go there on the pretext, on the pretext of filling their water pots. But in fact, they go only to fill the pots of their hearts with the rasa of Krishna praying. Panagata Janadai Ri Janadai Ri Panagata Jatahe. This is a Hindi from, from a Hindi song. Oh my friend, Gopi is telling. Oh my friend, please let me go to the Panagat. Otherwise, the resolve, which also means Panam, Panam, the resolve to meet my beloved, it will diminish. Gota Jaika. So we have to go to the Panagat and keep it. Then, to protect this resolve, the young girls of Braja would crowd the Panagat, carrying their clay pots. So they're getting water, yes. But really, what are they doing? They're filling their hearts with the rasa of Krishna Krain. Gurudev goes on. At this place, which is filled with rasa. Which place? Raja. He's describing Raja. Which is filled with rasa means the word rasila. Rasila means filled with rasa. So at this place, the Raja girls, they begin to dip their pots in the water on the pretext of filling them. And then the rasila flute of the crown jewel of all rasikas fills the air with rasa. Who even notices whether these girls of Braja fill their pots or bring them back empty? Oh my friend, this is all the wonder of that Panagat. The topmost relisher of transcendental knows, Rajendra Nandan, he repeatedly drowns in rasa in the sweet groves that echo with the rippling sounds of the Kalindi River and in the twisted and narrow Rasila lanes, he drowns in the Rasila teasing of the Rasili girls of Braj. <laughs> Rasila teasing of the Rasili girls of Braj. So sweet. In the heated disputes he has with them, he's drowning in the Rasila teasing of the Rasili girls of Braj. He drowns in their crooked sweet glances. He drowns in the sweet conversations and water sports he enjoys with them. Who can describe the glories of such a place as Braj? Jai Shri Gurudev. So Sri Sanatan Goswami has explained the meaning of Vrindavan in the following way. Vrindasya samuhasya avanam rakshanam palanam yasma tat vrindavanam. That place which maintains, nourishes, and protects everyone is called Vrindavan. You can repeat after me. This is Sanatan Goswami. That place, that place, that place which maintains, which maintains, nourishes, nourishes, nourishes and protects everyone, and protects and protects everyone, everyone is called Vrindavan. It's called Vrindavan. Which place is called Vrindavan? That place which nourishes and protects. Maintains, maintains, nourishes, nourishes and, and protects everyone. It's called Vrindavan. <clears throat> this land of Vrindavan conceals its godly nature. That means it's Bhagavad Bhav. So Vrindavan is concealing its godly nature. Meaning what? It appears like a simple village, simple forest, because it's concealing this. And Vrindavan lovingly maintains the herds of cows and calves and also the society of gopas and gopis. Vrindavan is lovingly maintaining all of them. The Supreme Lord Sri Krishna 
being controlled by their love. He does not leave Vrindavan even for a moment. No? Did Krishna ever leave Vrindavan? No? No? Well, it looks like he did. That was an expansion. He left this transcendental Goloka Vrindavan and manifested on the earthly plane. No, he's still there. He's both. He's in both places at the same time. But it looks like he left that Vrindavan. Yeah, it looks. Yeah. No, he didn't leave. Because why? Because Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. Ever, 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 ever. Yeah, there's a very nice verse. <laughs> the Supreme Lord being controlled by their love. He does not leave Vrindavan even for a moment. Vrindavanam parityajya sakvachin naiva gachati. It's from Anchalila, Chaitanya Charitamrita. Vrindavanam parityajya means he does not give up. Parityajya means to give up Vrindavan. So Vrindavanam parityajya Sometimes it says padam ekanagachati, which means not even one foot step does he ever leave Vrindavan. And here it says sakvachin naivagachati. He never leaves up Vrindavan. So that is quoted also from Rupa Goswami's Lagu Bhagavatamrita. Yes. So in this way, we've just heard. Srila Gurudev's very, very rasa-filled uh, description from the core of his heart, where he is, he's writing this, and he's drowning in all this rasa as he's writing this, and giving all these impressions to us. Are you ready? Okay. So Sri Braj Mandala Parikrama Ki Jai, Sri Gurudev Ki Jai, Sri Rupanuga Guru Varga Ki Jai, Ananta Bodhi Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai, Nitai Gaur Premanu. Pancha Kota Guru Vrasya Krita Sindhu Viva Chanta Gita Nama. Jai Shri Gaur Arti Ki Jai, Shri Radha Krishna Jubal Arti Ki Jai. So, how about Yeah. <laughs>